2023, Mary County Sheriff Deputy John Durham answered his final call. Today we gather here to honor the memory of a brave and dedicated Deputy Sheriff who made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. It is tragic that such a servant was taken from us. There is no greater love than a man that would lay down their life for another. Like all of you, we mourn the loss of Deputy John Durham. Look around you at Gamebridge right now. This is how much your father was loved. Marion County Sheriff's Office, Deputy John Durham, Sheriff 333, is 1042. He has gone home for the final time. A somber crowd is gathered at Crown Hill Cemetery today as Marion County Sheriff's Deputy John Durham is laid to rest. In fact, this is a live picture now from the entrance to Crown Hill Cemetery. The procession is making its way in right now. And we resume our coverage of Deputy Durham's funeral services at the graveside rites as they begin. I'm Debbie Knox. And I'm Nick McGill. Deputy Durham will arrive soon at the graveside inside Crown Hill's Heroes of Public Service section. That is where he will be buried today, where so many heroes are buried. We'll bring you those services as soon as they begin. And uh, we are once again joined by Master Trooper Phil Hensley to carry us through this tonight. Thank you for joining us. We are so sad uh, to have to have you here, but we're very happy for your expertise and glad that you're joining Nick and me. So, I appreciate that, considering we were just here a week and a half ago, yes, Debbie. That's yes. kind of quick. Yes, it is. Well, we are looking now at the hearse just outside the gate. So tell us, let's kind of catch up a little bit, because our last we saw yeah. you and Melissa, it was the, 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 the actual funeral service was wrapping up. Right. Wrapped up at the field house, the procession began from there, so downtown Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. It went past the Criminal Justice Center to where they gave the final 1042, mm -hmm. which is the final off-duty call. We just heard that. Right, yes. just heard parts of that. Yeah. And then now to Crown Hill Cemetery where the more of the military and the police uh, ceremonial rites will begin. Yeah. We should mention that this is also where the garrison flag is set up, I believe. The fire department has set up that outside. massive. Yeah. We can't see it in this particular shot, but we understand that it's right near this area. If yeah. you look towards the very far left portion of your screen, you can see part of the ladder truck, yeah. and okay. that would be right about where that garrison flag is posted. So and it's just outside the grounds. And mm -hmm. once Deputy Derm passes through it, they begin to take it down. Right. They they put that up, uh, and if we've got time, I'll give you a little bit of history on it if you'd like. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, that garrison flag, as it is today, Day, it's 20 foot by 38 feet. Huge. So very big flag, but this actually goes all the way back to the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. In Baltimore, uh, people were concerned about the British coming and invading Baltimore, so Fort McHenry being right outside. Mm -hmm. The major that was the commander wanted to have a very large flag. Mm -hmm. He said he wanted to make sure that when the British came, they knew that they were there. So it was kind of like modern day of, hey, here we are, mm -hmm. bring it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he commissions for a large flag to be made, and this flag ends up being about 30 feet by, I believe, uh, 30 by 42 feet. Yeah. So you think it's about huge. that in terms, that's yeah. 1,260 square feet. That's large. Yeah. They post the flag in, uh, it finished the commission. It was made in August 19th, 1813. Okay. Mm -hmm. We fast forward to 1814, mm -hmm. September 12th into September 13th. The British do invade. Mm -hmm. They invade Baltimore, and on the 13th, they invade Fort McHenry. Mm -hmm. The morning of September 14th, 1814, that flag is still standing, mm -hmm. and that's the very flag that Francis Scott Key sees, oh. and it's the inspiration for the Star Spangled wow. Banner. Oh, there you go. So that's wow. that that emphasis of the the large flag. Yes. The presence of, we are here for freedom, we are strength. Mm -hmm. That being used today, we are still here. We've lost someone in our, in our mm -hmm. profession, in our brotherhood and sisterhood of law enforcement. But we are still here, we will still be here, and in the morning, will still be serving our community. Yeah. Well, that almost gives me and, chills. And that goes exactly to the hundreds of, of law enforcement officers who are there right now. They are here currently at Crown Hill honoring the life of a, of a fallen Marion County Sheriff's deputy. And then tomorrow they will still be here in the community serving once again. The job continues uh, even after you take a break to 
honor someone who has fallen. Blind. We'll go home and we'll dismantle our dress uniform and put it back on our regular duty uniform. And in the morning, instead of you know doing honors like this, we'll pick up the radio and go 1041, right. which is the on-duty call, and we're ready for service. We're yeah. ready to go. So we are stopped at this point. Um, and there, but there are things happening. So tell us what we can't see and sort of who, who already is at the cemetery at this point. At this point, everyone that was in the procession at the, from the field house forward is getting ready to be formed uh, into an officer formation. And there's a certain staging area where we place all of the officers, where we place the honor guard, where we place the uh, pipes and drums. Everything is kind of laid out within the ground. So right now, all of the officers are getting out of their cars with their families and forming up. A little inside baseball for you. At the, at the gates, a lot of times there'll be some pauses uh, to get the horse ready or different elements of the procession from the gates to the gravesite. But a lot of times the family just needs to use the restroom, yeah. mm -hmm. get some snacks, stretch right. sure. their legs. Yeah. This is about them. Yeah. So for however long the officers have to wait in formation, it doesn't matter. It's about the focus of the family and the family's needs because this is their moment. Mm -hmm. This is as their send off for their family member. You mentioned the horse there. We, we do know that Deputy Durham will be taken by carriage to, to the graveside, but there's also the riderless horse that is there. And um, it, it's fresh in my mind because, again, we were here just a week and a half ago talking about this, but you had mentioned, you know, harking back to the traditions that go back so far, the riderless horse going back to, I believe you said it was Alexander Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yes, That's the right. first Secretary of Treasury uh, was the first one to have a riderless horse mm -hmm. and actually the first time that the boots are placed in the stirrups backwards right. the very first time that was done for a military funeral was uh, for the funeral of Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. and what that does when they're facing backwards that represents that they will never ride the horse again mm -hmm. but it was also from a military standpoint of this is my it, my final look of my men that I've led into battle so it was more of a, a military tradition before it was applied to uh, more upper level government officials. Yeah, but again, it just goes back to how long these traditions have been a part uh, of, our, of our culture. And, and if we can, we also want to take a look back at how we quite literally got here today. We know seeing Deputy Derb there, it, it means that the, the procession has concluded, that procession that went from Gamebridge uh, to the Community Justice uh, Campus, where we know, and in a very touching moment, um, as we see the horse mm -hmm. getting prepared there, we know um, the judges who preside there right, at the, the CJC, Center. the judges right. who, who no doubt had interactions probably mm -hmm. um, with Deputy Durham, were sitting right there, there they are, um, with their hands over their hearts paying tribute to him as, as, as he passed by. That is a moment that we don't always see, um, in, you know, highlights the special circumstances of this moment, but to have them take a, a minute out of their day mm -hmm. to step outside in their ropes and, and, and to place their hands over their heart there, it was a, certainly a warming moment. Yeah, very, and, and they announced last week they were closing their courts yeah. for this, which is, um, I think, yeah, an it's, thing to yeah. Do. and we see the pipes and drums getting ready. We yes. saw the, the horse uh, getting ready. We know that we're we're about to be underway here in a second. If we can, really quickly, we want to go uh, to our Max Lewis. We know he is live there inside Crown Hill, uh, has been there as people continue to file in uh, ahead of the services. We want to check in with him. Yeah. Max? Hey. Hey, Debbie and Nick. Yeah, I, I am here in Crown Hill Cemetery here at the Heroes of Public Safety area where Deputy Durham is going to be laid to rest here very shortly. Obviously, it's not a very long drive from the gates to this area just inside the cemetery, but obviously they're going to make their way here with uh, all of that symbolism that you guys are talking about. I'm going to step out of the way, just sort of give you a lay of the land of what's going on right now. Um, as you can see, uh, just within the past five, ten minutes, there's been a huge uh, formation of all of these officers who've come out here to to pay their respects to Deputy Durham, uh, not just obviously from the Marion County Sheriff's Office, but from sheriff's offices and police departments all across uh, the state here. I've seen them as uh, far as South Bend all the way down um, into our southern part of the state as well. So a lot of people out here, they are forming up, lining up, uh, getting ready to uh, pay their respects. And, and this is where all of this is going to happen right here, as I was saying at the Heroes of Public Safety area. I do want to give you a shot if we if we can see it. It is the um, the grave vault, the lid to the grave vault that is uh, sitting over there that's a very common part of these um, 
you know, police funerals and, and, and ceremonies. And they're generally, as I've seen before, unfortunately, too many times uh, in doing this job, that uh, there's pictures of him. I was able to go up and, and get a look at it real quick, just sort of pictures of uh, not only him and his uh, sons, but it looks like friends as well as uh, colleagues all represented on that. And so what is going to happen is, um, as you guys were talking about, the uh, caisson carrying the uh, casket, as well as that uh, riderless horse, all of that symbolism is going to make its way to here. There is going to be a ceremony here. And then uh, we also are going to see that very poignant moment um, at the end of the service where all of the officers here are going to take those white carnations with a, with a drop of red in between them, you know, symbolizing the blood that was uh, shed for, for the public. They are going to walk and they're going to drop those carnations um, on the casket, as we have seen, and that is all going to take place here. So right now, just really getting ready uh, for Deputy Durham to get here, as well as the family, and uh, to say their final goodbyes. Debbie, Nick. Max, thank you. You know, for anyone who might be joining us right now, and maybe you didn't see some of the, the uh, funeral this morning, I just want to let you know a little bit about Johnny, as they call him. Uh, Johnny, or John Durham, uh, this is in his obituary, was known by his family and friends. He was loved by so many. In addition to his family and friends, he was respected and loved by his brothers and sisters at Marion County Sheriff's Department and hospital staff, inmates as well. And you guys talked extensively this yeah. morning about how he was respected by inmates at the Marion County Jail where he worked. I, I, I think that bears repeating. I'm fascinated by that. I was too. I think that absolutely stands out that he, you know, over the course of an extraordinarily long career, yeah. has the ability to create relationships with those individuals that are incarcerated and mm -hmm. for them to respond back and have that relationship you know working hand in hand mm -hmm. I think it goes to a lot to his character to the level of integrity the man had right. and I think if anything else that's certainly a lesson for a lot of young law enforcement officers to take mm -hmm. forward to be able to have that relationship those are people too mm -hmm. treat them as such right. and and look at the respect that's earned and mutually yeah. earned there. That's, yeah. that's huge. That can be a transformative thing for everybody involved in that kind of a relationship. That's, that would be a tough thing yeah. to do. So. And, and, and Phil, we discussed this, you know, if, if anyone could be easily understood to, after 38 years, to, right. to be grizzled and hardened and jaded from the mm -hmm. job and just as, you know, clock in, clock out and say, I'm getting out of here and, you know, you guys are in here for a reason, mm -hmm. you could understand you know, um, if, if someone did that. If you, if you saw that from someone, it wouldn't shock you. But the fact that he didn't, mm -hmm. after nearly 40 years on the job, the fact that he maintained um, that level of not only treating people with respect, with, with, with kindness and generosity, shows a lot about who he was. I think that alone deserves the man to be put up on a pedestal. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exemplary of how we should be operating yeah. day to day with everyone. Yeah. It also mentions in his obituary that he loved animals and he even fed stray cats who came into his yard as outdoor pets. I mean, he really had this very magnanimous heart. I mean, you have to get a picture of, of the man that we're honoring here today and the whole city and the state honoring today is a, a, a man who cared, yeah. cared about everything in his job. It huh. screams of compassion, tenderheartedness, yeah. open-heartedness. That's, it's, it's the complete picture and complete image of a good person in simplistic yeah. terms, just a good person. Yeah. And, and that's right there, that's him. And yeah. oftentimes with, with these ceremonies, we, we see so many pictures of a fallen officer of deputy Durham in uniform on the job and it's easy to then just reduce him to that's all that he was right where mm -hmm. sometimes we just see that was a law enforcement that was, a, that was an officer that was a sheriff's deputy um but getting to see the pictures of his with his family with his friends yeah. with um with doing the things that he loves the candid moments mm -hmm. uh you know, hearing the stories about him as a person, liking to feed stray cats, liking mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. to pawn yeah. shops and pick up little treasures. Yeah. Um, it gives you a, a more complete and whole sense that this is a, a person who had a family. Yeah. Who it loved. instantly makes it mm -hmm. more relatable. Yeah. That's right. You know, you That's have right. this very clean, pressed look and mm -hmm. image you know, on a constant basis when you are in public, but behind right. closed doors, you're just as normal as can be. Yeah. And for people to say, oh yeah, we've lost an officer, but man, he was just like me. I love, I love taking care of cats too. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> that's, that's relatable. And yes. now suddenly there's an right. extra contact mm -hmm. with him that, that you 
you feel more compelled to have that and exhibit that compassion for the family's loss. I think his four sons were the on or he, they were the honorary pallbearers, weren't yeah. they during yes, the service? They were. Yeah. I believe seeing them in, and they in spoke kind of that during the service as right, well, right, right, um, right. providing some levity and some light moments mm -hmm. as well. But you can still see how, how deeply affected they are um, at them. Uh, and now we're giving a look, and we can see uh, ceremonies getting ready to start here in just a few moments. We anticipate. We see all the officers uh, rat ready right now, um, waiting for for Derm to come through. Um, I'd like to mention what, what Sheriff Kerry For Forrestal said, because I've been looking at mm -hmm. all this, and I, I just think uh, it's wonderful what he says here. He says, it was a solemn honor to award John with a Purple Heart in the Medal of Valor, but we can all honor the memory of Deputy John Durham by redoubling our efforts to create a society where law and order prevail, where respect for the rule of law is held, and where our brave men and women of uniform can serve without fear. I mean, Absolutely. it was so. Uh, yeah. Everybody tribute. had tremendous respect for him, yeah. and he was loved. What a tribute that was, even mm -hmm. seeing Reggie Miller take yes, the time to, exactly. to, to record Reggie. a video. Um, and speak directly to his family mm -hmm. and, 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 and talk about how much he loved uh, his family. And, and Phil, we talked about this, not only to have a guy like Reggie Miller take the time to do that, but um, the insight that he had into Deputy Durham and his family, mm -hmm. you know, you, we think about like, if we, I could have a conversation with, you know, a famous athlete, a superstar, mm -hmm. somebody like, boy, all the things yeah. that I would talk about. And what did, what did John Durham talk about? Of all the things you could talk to yeah. Reggie Miller, Miller. about, yeah. you <laughs> talk about your kids. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. what a testament to who he is as a yeah. man, as a father, right. as a caring individual. Wow. And, and for Reggie, it left, left such a, an impression on Reggie Miller that he wanted to make sure and address the boys his, directly. His that's who yeah. this message was to, was to those four boys. And that's, that's huge. That We're about to, to move the hearse. So I guess let's, let's listen in for a minute. Public safety section, which we were there just what, a week, ten days ago. Yeah. Um, Trooper Smith. So, tell us a little bit about that for our, our viewers who are watching this. This is I know they're going to the southern part of the cemetery, but uh, tell us about that. Naturally, Crown Hill is a very large cemetery, but it was after the events of September 11th, 2001. Six days later, ironically, the Marion County Sheriff's Office lost a deputy. Uh, Jason Baker was killed in the line of duty. So after those two events, the uh, cemetery decided to create an area dedicated to fallen military and, and law enforcement, and they created the Heroes of Public Safety Memorial. That was dedicated on September 14th of 2002. So since then, um, there's over one and a half acres, and I believe 
over 1,500 yeah. available grave sites. God forbid we ever come close to try to filling any any of that. I would love to see that 1.5 acres stay empty. Yeah. Uh, but this is a dedicated area specifically for fallen law enforcement. And, and I would offer that anybody who has a free afternoon, um, mm -hmm. go to Crown Hill, go to this section and, and check it out mm -hmm. because not only will it leave certainly an impression on you, but it's just an amazing section of the cemetery to see. Mm -hmm. Very reverent. It's very, very amazing just being mm -hmm. there and, and seeing that, kind of just feeling the the presence of, of what is there. It transcends so much larger things than what you are as a being, just mm -hmm. simply being there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the cemetery itself is laid out beautifully. It's huge, as you mentioned, and there's presidents buried there and obviously our heroes, so it, yeah, you're right. It's, it's a fascinating place to go um, and learn a lot about um, Indiana's history. Yeah, getting another shot there of the vaults there that, mm -hmm. will, that will go on top of uh, the grave there, of Deputy John Durham, and we see the officers uh, standing at attention, getting ready um, to welcome him as he comes. Uh, it makes that final stretch there. Um, you know, this is, it, so much of this is, takes so much coordination so much planning to, 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 to get something done uh, like this. And when you have such a large presence there, um, it, it certainly is a monumental task to get things ready here. Um, and you know, you the, everybody had to be involved with yeah. this just a week or 10 days ago. So how yeah. much did this did this tra change drastically? Were it, sadly, were people prepared to take this role again so quickly? I mean, I, I, it's, it's a horrible thing to have to do and yet, you know, you have. You know, we all must do this and, and be part of this. And you just feel for the people who have to take on this role so quickly. To, to have such a quick turnaround. Yes, yes. The only upside that you could honestly take from this is you're so fresh from doing it that it makes okay. We just um, did this. Your practice. We we knew this worked well. Let's yeah. go ahead with this. Yeah. The. I am, I'm very confident that there was an outpouring of everyone once again, even though we've just come uh, off of one right here 10 days ago. A week ago today, we just buried uh, Sergeant Heather Glenn with the Tell right. City Police Department. Here we are again. Everybody is still just right on the edge of what can I do? What can I do? How can I help? Yeah. That is immeasurable for that kind of uh, offer of commitment to what the ultimate goal is, mm -hmm. and that's to honor the family and honor John here. And no, it's the quick turnaround. Yeah, it's it's taxing mentally, it's taxing emotionally. Yes. But regardless, everyone involved. Hey, we have a job to do. There's responsibilities, yeah. and there's a family counting on us. Yeah. Right. We that's will right. go 110 yeah. percent. Absolutely, whatever we've got to do mm -hmm. to get it done. And this is the end result. Yeah. The, the yeah. beauty of this ceremony. And on a, on a personal level, you were did to. to to lead back into how taxing this can be. You were telling us earlier this afternoon that you know, we, we know officers wear that black band yes, around their badge. Um, and because we've had three officers fall on the line of duty just in a matter of a couple of weeks, you were saying this is the longest period that you've had that black band, one of the longest periods mm -hmm. you've had that black band on your badge. Right, in, in 19 years of law enforcement, uh, I put this on uh, my first shift after Aaron Smith died at the end of June. Mm -hmm. Since then, and today is the 17th of July, it has not come off. And that is the longest stretch, almost three yeah. weeks. I've, I've, there's always been a period where you at least take it off for a little bit to have line of duty death after line of duty death and now another line mm -hmm. of duty death. Right. For it to stay on this long, it's, it's almost, it's like every time I look at my uniform, yep, mm -hmm. there it is. It's now become a part of where I, what I wear. Yeah. And the unfortunate part of that is, that's not who we are. You know, we're not about about the downside and the negative aspects mm -hmm. of law enforcement. We're here to serve and be out. Yeah. But hey, it's it's been with me. People have seen, oh, yeah, you lost another one? You right. lost another officer? Right. Yeah, we sure did. We yeah. absolutely did. Yeah. We, we should five mention this year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Five. You mentioned, five. You mentioned that earlier, too. Five for five the state officers. of Indiana. And it's not just this year. It's really since the first part of March. Yeah. Yeah. March forward is when we've oh. lost these five. Heartbreaking. It, it's tough because the problem here is Tomorrow we could lose another one. We could lose two tomorrow. Mm. Or we could go all the way through December and not lose another one. We don't know. Day to day, hour to hour, mm. we're so, it's such a fluid and dynamic profession. 
anything could happen. Yeah. Anything. We should even mention we're talking about the black black band on on the badge there, but also the red braid. Everything is this interesting symbolism and has this history that it's so fascinating to know. Our honor guard team has for the state police we have two uh, braids. One mm -hmm. is blue, and then which we wear for parade details, ceremonial things, mm -hmm. more like that. Anytime we wear the red, it's symbolic of either our memorial services or a line of duty death. And again, this thing doesn't hasn't been able to find its way off my yeah. dress blouse here for yeah. three weeks, so yeah. it's certainly a little bit tough. Yeah. yeah, it is tough. We saw some images just a second ago from from the ceremony at Gainbridge Fieldhouse. We're now back to a live shot here, taking you live at Crown Hill, where. Um, Deputy Durham is making his way to the Heroes of Public Safety section. You can hear in the background there the pipes and drums playing. Um, one of the haunting sounds of a ceremony like this, I mean, the bagpipes themselves, the drums themselves, um, have that sound of, of longing almost as if they're crying themselves. And, and then you hear that in the background of what's going on here. Uh, it, it really drives home the, the the heavy nature of, uh, of what we're, we're doing here today. The yeah. bagpipe itself has such a hollow sound. It's yeah. I, of it any is. instrument, I hate it because yeah. it sounds so gloomy. It sounds so just horrible. Ironically, that's the purpose of it. You know, from from Scottish and Irish uh, immigrants to this country, initially their main profession as they come over were uh, police officers in cities like New York mm -hmm. City and Boston those guys were, were tough to crack emotionally. The only time you could get them to sort of rattle a little bit and show emotion was during funerals and when they heard those yeah. bagpipes. And that's even a saying. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you ever want to see one of them cry, yeah. you just you play the bagpipes. Yeah, play the bagpipes. That's right. yes, yeah. that's right. Absolutely. Yeah. So as they process and get closer, let's, I guess, tell our audience kind of what's, what will happen as time goes on here. Here we see the procession of um, police cars into the cemetery. Tell us what, what's going to be happening in the next few minutes. As the coach approaches the Heroes of Public Safety Memorial, uh, it will pull up and it will stop uh, as the pallbearers prepare to take uh, Deputy Durham out. Uh, the entire uh, group of officers and honor guard will be called to attention. Uh, they'll open the door and the officers will be told to present arms, which is give their hand salute then they will uh, remove him from the coach and place him where he'll be memorialized there on the site. Uh, the coach will pull forward, the family will be seated, and the Catholic ceremonies of the funeral will proceed before the military yeah. aspect does. Yeah, it was a full Catholic uh, funeral this morning. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the irony of some of that is, as we're sitting here on the desk watching that this morning, mm -hmm. it, uh, the incense, the music, you can, I could almost smell being yeah. there. there. It just, yeah. it hit home when you watch that and it's, you know, as as a server, altar boy growing up yeah. and being at funerals you know, and church, I know yeah. those yeah, smells you know and those I know smells. the, oh, yeah. the yeah. rituals step by step and it's, you, boy, you talk about something that just kind of hits you as you watch that. I would think you know it too. I do, yeah, yes, Catholic, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, it's something that I'm uh, uniquely familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, there we see more honor guard um, right there. And, and we that's, see the, a, that's a multi-agency honor guard. They yeah. have uh, sort of an incorporation of, of different uh, agencies as they process through. And if you noticed, um, there was an individual carrying the thin blue line flag, mm -hmm. uh, and he was walking solo. That is actually a member of the Tell City Police Department. Mm -hmm. The way this uh, they've operated this, uh, in order to recognize the department who last lost an officer, which would be Tell City, right. they have an officer from that department carrying that flag. And powerful image we're watching here as the pipes and drums make their way, uh, leading Deputy Durham. Uh, to that is truly a dedicated group of individuals. They, they have their craft, it, it's down to an art. Um, mm -hmm. As, as much as I don't care for the bagpipes, those guys are good at yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And at, as well. at the service of police agencies, I would imagine all of those days, and yeah, maybe further, I don't know. There's, it looks like a large group, so. Yeah, and there's the rider of the horse there. You can see the, the boots there and the stirrups uh, facing backwards uh, there. So John was just a beloved man. He was uh, loved, of course, by his sons and, and the people he worked with. He was an avid hunter. 
he, uh, he just, he, I just can't get over when you start talking about this man that we're honoring today, what a, what a great heart he had to have had. And uh, I think we just need to keep remembering that it's so important to remember people like this who serve all the rest of us mm -hmm. in the community and, and the kind of sacrifice they all make. Mm -hmm. And Debbie, for as long as he did, that was something we talked about this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have 19 years on the department. I'd have to double my career yeah. from start to now yeah. in order to have what he's had. Right. That's right. To see somebody 38 years, normally a lot of guys are thinking, oh, 20, 25, I'm going to leave as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. They hit 30, it's like, eh, I'm not going to stay too much longer. He was at 38. Yeah. Right. That's what a testament to what he truly yeah. gave to this sheriff's department and his community. Yeah. Uh, and quite an image we're seeing here now as well as we can see the officers there um, all gathered to, there to receive Deputy Durham. Um, let's take a listen in here in these ceremonies.
Our brother John has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our brother. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture that our citizenship is in heaven and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our brother may sleep here in peace until you awaken him to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then he will see you face to face and in your light will see light and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Ensure in certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend it to Almighty God, our brother John, and we commit his body to its resting place. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So we are rejoining the service, as you can see, the burial service for Marion County Deputy John Durham. Uh, we are joined, of course, by State Trooper Phil Hensley. So let's let's talk about the significance of what's happening right now. Right now, all of the officers that were present in the formation are placing white carnations on top of the casket. They were given these carnations before the uh, services at the field house. And when you wear these, it's generally tucked under your, your nameplate and it's upside down. Now the white carnation represents purity of life, but that carnation also has a little red dot at the end of it. Mm -hmm. And that is symbolic of the blood spilled, uh, in this case of Deputy Durham. So these will all be placed, uh, it's an opportunity for everybody there to make one final pass, uh, pass Deputy Durham and lay that on his casket. Mm -hmm. And we know there are hundreds of officers there, so this uh -huh. will this will be yeah. certainly going on uh, for a while. Here we saw so many parts of the, the service there. Um, that sadly we've grown accustomed to uh, the three volley salute. We saw we heard uh, taps. We've heard Amazing Grace, pipes and drums, um, and now begins. And we see you know an officer there. Um, bowing her head towards De Deputy Durham. Um, Almost like the final goodbye, you know, for yeah. this part of it anyway. Right, so. this is the last chance for for so many people that worked with him, that knew him, to, to be close to him. Yeah. And, you know, this, this is probably one of the most trying moments um, mm -hmm. emotionally for the officers during the entire funeral and services here graveside, is this is genuinely their last goodbye. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's good that we incorporate this as as that giving them that opportunity, right. one final opportunity mm -hmm. to say goodbye. Right. A few moments ago, we saw the folding of the flag, and and the officers saluted uh, not other officers in this case. They actually saluted the flag. Is that right? Right. When the flag folding team uh, completes the flag fold, and that flag fold, uh, Debbie and Nick, is made up of 13 steps. There are 13 different movements within that fold. They complete that and they hand that uh, off to uh, the officer in charge who is going to present that to the family. And when they do, they hand that. They salute the flag. They do not salute, even though certainly he's, uh, I believe, Colonel. Uh, he's of rank and would be deserving of that respect and that honor of being hand saluted. The salute goes to the flag as an honor of being draped over the casket of Deputy Durham. Mm -hmm. And then that is uh, presented to the family. And in this case, his oldest son, we would anticipate, but... It's a lot of times that can be up to the family, but as that goes for mm -hmm. um, giving that, that flag to the family, it would go spouse and then oldest, uh, mm -hmm. oldest child. And mm -hmm. in that case, it would be John Jr. And what's one of the <coughs> most emotional moments of the entire the entire service, seeing that flag being handed over is usually, yeah. uh, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a hard hitting moment. Mm -hmm. It's seeing the look I think what triggers the emotion in that is when you hand that flag to the family member, you're face to face with them and you look into their eyes mm -hmm. and you see beyond what everybody else mm -hmm. is seeing, you see that emotion and that loss and that grief mm -hmm. just by looking right into their eyes and I think for the family they know this is, this is it. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing that and knowing that that's exactly how they feel. Mm -hmm that carries a heavy burden that you know I, I can go through and I, I can exactly see the look in every single uh, survivor's face that I've presented mm -hmm. something to gravesite and it oh, I remember them all yeah because it's that deep sure it is sure. now afterwards um, I, I would I, I don't know if you can anticipate what's going to happen after all of this is completed I mean, it just do, do the officers get a chance to decompress? Do they, or maybe it's maybe it's better, like like in some cases, to to stop for a few moments and rest. You know, it's, what I'm trying to anticipate how, how to help these guys who are out there right now. For a lot of them, some I'm, I'm sure within the department they'll get together and they'll talk and they'll talk about John and they'll talk mm -hmm. just kind of general police shop as as police officers do. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of us, after a funeral like this, because the entire day, and even the days leading up to this, carry such an emotional weight, we're exhausted yeah. mentally, yeah. emotionally, even to an extent physically. And the only thing we want to do, because 
honestly, this is all we've been thinking about this entire day. We want to go home and see our families. Yeah. I want to go home and hug my wife, mm -hmm. hug my kids, because throughout the course of this entire thing, I promise you, every officer there is thinking, what if that was me? What if that's my family sitting there watching mm -hmm. as all of these officers lay carnations on this casket? What, there's so many what ifs. And to be able to step out of that what if and back into your comfort spot of, I'm with my family, you know, I love you, I'm happy to be home. Mm -hmm. And they're certainly happy to have you as well, you yeah. know, especially after, yeah. after living part of this. And right. then, but as we, we've mentioned several times, then tomorrow comes and it's back to the job. Right, the rest of the evening, you know, you go home, you try to decompress, but part of that is you have to put your regular uniform back together. Yeah. Um, so I'll change my stuff back to my short sleeve uniform, switch out my gun belt, make sure everything's lined out good to go, and six in the morning I'm signing back on duty. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's our responsibility, that's, that's our job, yeah. that's what we are supposed to do yeah. for the, the citizens of the state of Indiana. And that's thank the, you, Trooper yeah. Hensley, and thank you, John Durham, for yeah. your service. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to leave this final part of the services right now and rejoin our regular programming. We'll have more on this on both the Fox 59 Evening News and the CBS 4 Evening News, as well as on our websites, fox59.com, cbs4indy.com. We'll leave it here.